He that believes. He that believeth, he that believeth, has the everlasting life. He that believeth, the Lord and His Son, has the everlasting life. And I get to hear me come and walk all around, have the everlasting life. I'm going to sit down by my seat and go and be along my ground, have the everlasting life. Thank you very much, musicians. We appreciate you, your ministry. Praise God. They sound good. Can you say amen? Thank you, Jesus. Let's turn in our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4.12, if you're a Bible reader, you know what that scripture says. And I'll read it to you. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I read it to you in the New Living Translation. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. And then Hebrews 4.12 in the Living Bible says, For whatever God says to us is full of living power. It is sharper than the sharpest dagger, cutting swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires with all their parts, exposing us for what we really are. Mm. That's a powerful translation or paraphrase, but it's a very good thought, exposing us for what we really are. Uh, a man by the name of Philip Brooks said, the Bible is like a telescope. If a man looks through a telescope, he sees worlds beyond. But if he looks at his telescope, he doesn't see anything but his telescope. So you have to look through it. And the truth is we have to look at life through the Word of God as Christians. One of the challenges of every preacher is to, is to get uh, uh, the people in his congregation to think biblically, to look at life through the Holy Scriptures and to process life through the Word of God. And so the Bible is a thing to be looked through so that you can see what is beyond. The, the sad fact is most people only look at it. And if all you do is look at it, all you see is another book, the dead letter. And I was thinking about this and that I was thinking that the Word of God is also like a microscope. You know, there are things that you can't see with the naked eye. Right. But if you look at them through a microscope, you know, you, you can see detail that, that you never saw before. And so the Word of God's like that, too. It helps us to see things that we otherwise would never see. And sometimes those things can be scary. Have you ever looked at, at, at a spider under a microscope? Or you looked at a picture of, a, of one that's been blown up, whether it's a spider or a flea or, a, or a, you know, some kind of critter, uh, dust mite that are in everybody's carpet, and it's like, yikes, that's some ugly stuff there. And the, the Word of God has the power to reveal. And so that scripture in the New Living Translation, it says, cutting swift and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires with all their parts, exposing us for what we, we really are. You know, and that does really explain one of the reasons that, that people in the world really don't like the Bible. Because it exposes us for what we really are. And, you know, it's not God's, uh, God's way of, of making us just uh, feel so terrible about ourselves, but it's God's way of bringing conviction to our hearts so that we'll repent of the things that are wrong and make them right. Amen. Someone wrote, men do not reject the Bible because it contradicts itself. They reject the Bible because it contradicts them. 
And that's, that's one of the, the problems with the word of God. And so I want to, I want to preach this very simple message that I'm entitling simply the word of God and hopefully help us to, to really appreciate this Bible, this word that God has given to us. These are not just, these are not just dead words in here. The scripture says the word of God is living and powerful. Amen. It, it is, it is endued with spiritual power that comes from God. And it's a great benefit uh, to those who read it, who study it, and who live according to its precepts and its principles. <clears throat> and I'm just going to share some scriptures with you and, and comment on them briefly. In Psalm 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, and so... You know, here we, we live in the 21st century. We've got, we've got uh, technology that is awesome. And we, when we think of a, a lamp to light our way, we're thinking of a million candle power lamp. And when this was written, there was no such thing. What they had was one candle power. You know how much one candle power lights? Not much. And so the picture is of an oil lamp. You know, here's a lamp that's got a wick and it's filled with olive oil. You light that. And he says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So if you're in the dark and you're walking down a path and all you have is this oil lamp, it's not going to shine way far ahead. What it's going to do is it's going to illuminate where you put your next step. And so the word of God is a lamp or a light for our next step. It shows us, it's a, it, it shows us where to go each day. And not even throughout the whole day, but each step of the way. Amen. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, this word, the word of God has been given to us to guide our way. It's been given to us to help us to see things properly. Psalm 119, 130 says, The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. You know, the simple are those who, who are uh, without godly perspective. They're, they're without understanding. They're just like we were before we got saved. We didn't know things. We didn't understand things. We didn't understand a thing about eternity. You know, we might have known about heaven and hell and, and you know, have some concept of, of spiritual things from our upbringing, but we really did not understand. And it came as a revelation to us that, uh, you know what, there, there is a devil and there are demons and there is, there is a heaven and there is a hell and that one day I'm going to go someplace. You know, that's like a, a revelation. I remember when I got saved, it was because God showed me that I was on my way to hell. And that, you know, put the fear of God in me. And, and it gave under, in my mind, I was just living my life. I was what you could call simple minded. I was foolish without understanding, without perspective, without thought of eternity. But the word of God is what when it enters us it gives light and it gives understanding to the simple psalm 19 8 says the statutes of the lord are right rejoicing the heart the commandment of the lord is pure in light enlightening the eyes the new living translation puts that this way the commandments of the lord are right bringing joy to the heart the commandments of the Lord, the commands of, of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. So there's that concept of a light, a lamp unto my path, of uh, to my feet, and a light unto my path. The word of God gives us insight for how to live this life. Amen. Psalm 19, 7 
says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Amen. Converting the soul. See, that is the reason that God gave us his word, so that when we read it and when we consume it, it converts our soul. I was, I was listening or watching a, a video that, uh, that was sent to me by Brother Adam Castillo. He wanted me to, to, re, uh, to look at it. It was, about a, it was a Jewish man giving a lecture. And in that video, there were some testimonies. And I, I was trying to record one of those testimonies for you to hear, but I wasn't able to get it. And so, but here's a man who was raised as, as a Jewish man, uh, you know, was not spiritual at all. And, and he, he got saved. He got saved by, by reading the word of God. And when he got saved, his parents weren't pleased with him because they were, they were practicing Jews. They weren't happy that he, that he converted to Christianity. And, uh, and so, you know, over the process of time, uh, you know, he, uh, his parents came to visit him and his mom spent some time with his teenage daughter. And, uh, and she came to him and said, you have, a, you have an amazing daughter. You have a wonderful daughter. His daughter was a Christian. And, and so he, he you know, shared his testimony with her. And long story short, his mom started reading the New Testament up to that point. He said she was very, a very avid reader and she would always read the Torah. She would read the, the Jewish scriptures, and, but they reject the New Testament. And so, so she was kind of intrigued and so she started reading about Jesus and she was so amazed at how Jewish Jesus was because he was a Jew. And, and, and in reading the, the scriptures, the New Testament is, is Jewish. It was written by converted Jews. And so the woman, the, this, this, the mother of this man read this, the Jewish scriptures, the New Testament, and she was so shocked about who Jesus was that she got saved. Amen. She got converted. See, that's the power of God's word. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Psalm 119, 9 through 11 says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. My, with my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You know, the word of God preserves us. It, it preserves us because it's very clear as to what's right and wrong and what's good and evil. We live in a world that's totally upside down. Good is evil and evil is good in our world. You know, if, you're a, if you are a, a Bible believer uh, today and you, you believe the word of God, then somehow there's something wrong with you according to our culture. And uh, we live in what they call a cancel culture where everybody's woke. Supposedly they're woke, which means that they know what's going on and, and you know, that, you know they're, they're, you know, with it up here, but uh, I think of the, the uh, scripture in, in Romans 1 uh, because, you know, they say we're woke, but what they've done is they've rejected God and his word. And I think of the scripture in Romans 1 where it says, it says that because they knew God, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened Professing to be wise, they became fools. Professing to be wise, they became fools. You know, it's real popular for young people now to say that they're atheists. You know, it's, a, it's kind of a, a, a fad that young people say they're, you know, one of the largest groups of, of, of uh, you know, classifications of young people today is the term called nuns. Have, have anybody heard the word nuns? And it's not N-U-N. It's N-O-N-E. So when they say, what is your re religious affiliation? None. So they call them the nuns. And so what has happened 
is that we live in a culture that they say they're woke, but they're not woke. They're, they're not woke to spiritual things. You know, they're, they're asleep. They're blinded by the God of this age. And it says that they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. That's what happens when people reject the word of God, but when people embrace the word of God, they're enlightened, they see the truth of God. You know, and here's the reality, is that there's only one truth, and that belongs to God, that belongs to Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So either he's the truth or he's not the truth. And people have to decide what they're going to believe. He said, your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. What happens when people reject God and they reject his word, they sin against him. You know, they're supposedly woke, but they're really blind. They're asleep. You know, they're, they're, they've been lulled to sleep by Satan. You know, the Bible says if our God, if our gospel is hidden, it's hidden to those who do not believe, whose minds the God of this world has blinded, lest they should see the glorious light of the gospel. That's why it's so important that we take the word of God outside these four walls and preach it to our world. Because unless people hear the word of God, unless they're challenged with the word of God, they're going to stay asleep. They're going to stay dead. They're going to stay blinded. We know what the scripture says. It says, it says that in Romans 10, it says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We know that. But how shall they call in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Then he makes this conclusion. He says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do you see the connection? That is why we have to preach. That is why we have to outreach. That is why uh, we have to do what we're, what we're setting out to do. And that is to take this gospel outside the four walls and to see that message preached in different communities of, here in our county. Amen. I'll never forget the words of Pastor Mitchell, our, our uh, uh, leader who is now with Jesus. <coughs> he said, he said many times, if you see a church that's growing, it's because they're evangelizing. Amen. It's because they're evangelizing. <clears throat> and so, the word of God is a powerful weapon in the hands of God's people. Let me read this, uh, this, it's not really a poem. I'm not sure what this is. We don't know who wrote this, but it's very profound. Speaking of the Bible, this book is the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy. Its precepts are binding. Its histories are true. And its decisions are immutable. In other words, unchangeable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's character. Here, paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell made known. Christ is its grand subject, 
Our good is its design and the glory of God its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. Follow its precepts, and it will lead you to Calvary, to the empty tomb, to a resurrected life in Christ, and yes, to glory itself for eternity. The Word of God. Romans 5, 4, 15, 4 says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. You know, as we were in prayer meeting before church, I was, I was in there and I was, I was uh, just praying and thinking about this message. And the scripture in John 1.14 came to mind. And you know what it says? It says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And as I, I thought of that, that verse and about preaching on the word of God, the Bible says that Jesus was the Word of God. Amen. From the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it, or did not overcome it. Jesus is the Word of God who became flesh. That's how come when He was on the earth, people were astonished at His Word. You know, at 12 years old, He's asking questions and answering questions that were just blowing the minds of the, the, the leaders who were there at the temple. When He began to minister, people heard His words and it says at the end of the Sermon on the Mount that they were amazed at the words of Jesus for he spoke with authority and not as the scribes. You know why he spoke with authority? Because he was the living word of God. You know, when the devil, when the devil uh, tempted him in the wilderness, he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the Word, He lived it, He embodied the Word. He was the Word incarnate. And that's why He was irresistible. And that's why they hated Him. That's why they killed Him. Because it wasn't that, that uh, you know, He was contradicting the Word of God. It's that He was contradicting them. But how many know as believers in Jesus Christ, we should welcome the Word. We should love the Word. We should embrace the Word. Amen. He said in the judgment, He said it's this Word that is going to judge people. It's His Word that measures men. It's the Word of God that, that it is going, we're going to be compared to the Word of God. And so as, as believers, we're to align ourselves with the Word and live our lives according to His Word. We're to let His Word change us and transform us and make us into the men and women that He created us to be. <coughs> God's Word in our initial scripture speaks of its power. And as we were in prayer, I thought of this passage in, in Isaiah 55, verse 10, he said, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, 
that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth in singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name. For an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. You know that passage is talking about what the word of God accomplishes. He said it's like the snow. It's like the rain that falls from heaven. What does it do? What it does is it causes things to grow. It causes the seed that's planted in the ground to, to germinate and sprout and come forth and bear fruit. That's what the word of God does. He said, this is, this is the same thing my word does. He's making a direct comparison that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. That's why the word of God must be preached because how shall they call on him in whom they've not heard? How shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And so the word of God must be declared. This is one of the reasons that, that uh, you know, in our world, they want to cancel the Christian voice. It's been that way, you know, from, from, from the very beginning of Christianity. How many know the crucifixion was about canceling the voice of, of Christ? You know, when, when uh, Stephen was there uh, uh, testifying uh, in Acts chapter 6, it says they could not resist the spirit and the words that he spoke. So what they do, they canceled him. Right. They punched his ticket and he was gone. But they could not stop the word of God from being preached. They commanded the apostles not to preach or teach anymore in the name of Jesus. Why? Because it contradicted them. It convicted them. It condemned them. And so, you know, there's always been resistance to the word being preached. We're going to go out into places. We're not going to go to the city and, and, and ask them permission. We're going to go and we're going to, we're going to preach the word of God. And don't be surprised if there's some resistance. If there's some complaint. Don't be surprised. I mean, that's par for the course in, in the history of Christianity. But people need to hear the word of God because the word of God has power to change. It has power to cut through every false front that people put up. It's an eternal word. Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. The word of God is living and powerful and it must be proclaimed. It must be proclaimed. This is the only way that people are going to be saved. They must hear the message of the gospel. They must hear it straight, uncut, unwatered down. It must be declared. Amen. I know that, you know, there's different ways of, of getting the word out, you know, in this technological age, but, you know, people need to hear it. They need to hear the testimonies of men and women who've been changed Amen. by his power and by that word that they believed. They've been transformed because they believed Jesus. They believed in him. They believed that he died for their sins, that he rose again from the dead. They believed he had the power to forgive them and cleanse them and transform them, and he did. You know, I've told a few people recently that no one can really argue with a life that's been changed. I mean, you can argue all kinds of things, but when you see somebody who's been changed by the Spirit of God, 
because they got saved. There's no arguing with that. It's like the Pharisees and the, the chief priests when, when they brought Peter and John before them and tried to uh, get them to, to stop preaching the word of God. And it says, there's a man standing there who had been lame for 40 years. They said, it's obvious this man has been changed and there's nothing we can say against it. Everyone sees this man's life has changed. That's the power of a testimony. That's the power of someone who had heard the word of God and was changed, transformed. They're not what they used to be anymore. Here he is leaping and dancing and shouting and praising God when before there he was. Day after day after day, a lame beggar sitting at the gate of Solomon's porch. And there he is, walking and leaping and praising God and hugging the apostles because God did a miracle in his life. Amen. Full of joy, full of the Holy Spirit. And the number of the disciples came to be about 5,000 as a result of that changed life and the testimony of the word of God that Peter preached. See, we have that same word. Amen. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word of God is powerful. The word of God has impact. And remember what God said, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please. Just like the rain, just like the snow causes things to bud and bloom. You know, we're in a drought right now. You go outside and you look around and everything is so dry, isn't it? So dry. You know, and it's been dry for a couple of years now. I mean, never in my life have I seen animals eat irises. You know why? Because irises taste bad. And we've got a, a line of irises here growing on the side of the building. And you know what? The rabbits are eating them because there's nothing else. Because it's so dry. But you give something a little bit of water and you'll see it. You know, you see those flowers in the flower bed out there. You know, they're not pretty by accident. They're pretty because of water. Right. And fertilizer. And I'm telling you, the rain is coming. But you know what? We need to preach the word. We need to live the word. We need to embrace it. And we need to get we need to get with the, the, the program this year and keep taking the word. You know, last year was a year from hell. Satan was rejoicing. Churches are closing and, and people are not uh, taking the word out there. Nobody wanted to answer their door. You know, we didn't, we didn't do any door-to-door -door outreaching and all that because everybody was afraid of COVID. But you know what? This year, we're not going to let the devil have the victory. Amen. We're going to preach and we're going to pray and we're going to believe God. And I believe we're going to see God do incredible things. Amen. 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 We're going to see God break through. But the word of God must be preached. Amen. Amen. This book is the mind of God. This book has the power to change other lives the same way that he changed ours. Yes. Amen. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads together in this place. Do not underestimate the power of God's word. It is living and powerful and when it is preached it has the power to cut through all the shields, all the defenses that men put up. It has the power to convict and it has the power to transform. The truth 
is powerful. <coughs> you know, we, we all believe. That's why we're here tonight. We have confidence in God and in His Word. And I'm going to pray a prayer for those who are, who are not here with us today. And you know, the reason I pray the sinner's prayer every service is because there are people who are connecting online who hear a message like this and come to realize, you know what, I need Jesus in my life. And so I'm going to pray this simple prayer we call the sinner's prayer with you. If you're watching this later, you can pray this with me and, and believe in God. Open your heart to Jesus. Let him forgive your sin. Let him come into your heart to be your savior. You know, one day we're all going to die. We're going to stand before God. And when we do, I guarantee you, you're going to want to have Jesus as your Savior instead of your judge. And so pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross to forgive my sins. And Lord, I believe you rose from the dead on the third day. And right now, Jesus, I ask you, forgive me. I repent of all my sins. Come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. I receive you. And I pray that you would help me to live my life for you. From now on, fill me with your spirit. Give me strength to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, God knows, God hears you. You know, you, you can contact us on our website, thedoorsilvercity.com. Let us know that you prayed and how we can help you to serve God. Amen. And I want to turn my attention to the members of this congregation that are here present with us tonight. The Word of God is transformational. The Word of God is such an encouragement. It is a guide, a lamp, lightens the way for us so we can know what to do next. It's been given to us as a great gift from God. And I want to encourage you as a child of God to, to do what that, that little reading that I read said. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully. Follow its precepts. And it will lead you to Calvary, to the empty tomb, to a resurrected life in Christ. And yes, to glory itself for eternity. Follow the word of God. The word of God will not lead you astray. But it's something that we have to take in. Something we have to live. Something we have to believe. And measure our lives according to God's word. Don't measure your life according to others around you. Measure it according to God's word because it is our standard. So we're going to take some time. We're going to pray. We're going to open the altar for prayer. And if you want to come find a place to pray or you can, you can pray there at your seat. But we're going to pray that God's word will take effect. We're going to pray that as we take this word the Word of God into our community, that it's going to be like the rain. It's going to be like the moisture that falls on the land that causes things to grow, causes seed to germinate, that brings forth fruit. He said, My word shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which I sent it for. And so we're going to sing the song and worship the Lord and we're going to take time and open this altar for prayer. Amen. You can find a place to pray or you can turn there at your seat and kneel there and pray, but amen. You get a hold of God. Let's sing that song, I Give Myself Away, as we bring our service to its conclusion. Amen. I give myself away.
trusted us with it and he has made us his heralds in the earth Jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel amen preach it to every creature because who knows when that seed is going to fall in good soil and spring forth and yield 30, 60, 100 fold. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to believe that. We need to stand on that and, and together keep pushing. Keep pushing. Push in prayer. Push in the outreach and the evangelism. Personal witness and testimony. 
You tell people what God has done for you. His word will not return void. It is going to make an impact. It is going to accomplish what he sent it to do. For some people, it's going to save them. And for others, it's going to condemn them because they did not believe. But that's not that's not up to us. That's God's domain. And it's like people say, did my family member go to heaven? I'm like, that's not a, I'm not God, I can't tell you. That's God's business. And so let's do our part and God will do his part. So why don't we pray as we bring our service to a close. Amen. George, would you ask God's blessing as we dismiss? Oh Lord, I thank you for all that you do in our lives. Lord, I pray that you would send people to the strong land, God. I thank you for all that you do. I thank you for today, God, that we can come here today and hear your word, God. I pray that you move in each, each of our lives, Lord. I pray that we can tell people about you, God, that we can Amen, God, and I pray that you touch us.